hidden away by a rash of trees and the wall from nearby Backford Hall stands the ancient church of St Oswald's, believed to have been here since at least the 13th century. The first vicar here at St Oswald's was William de Aston, who took up his post in 1305. However, he was followed in 1349 by Henry de Moulton. Welcome to Rambles Through History. mention of a church here at Backford was during the 13th century. However, the church was gifted by Hammond de Massey to the Benedictine Priory at Birkenhead. Unfortunately today, very little of the old church remains apart from the chancel and the tower. The rest is the result of rebuilding during the 18th and 19th centuries. The tower that we see today dates right back to the 16th century, however the battlemented parapets on the top are more likely from the Victorian period. Now the chancel here at St Oswald's retains a wonderful, fine, three light pointed window and it's believed that this window dates back to around the year of 1375 AD. It's in this window that fragments of painted glass were found with the letter R repeated through the panes. Does this refer to Richard de Radcliffe, Lord of Backford? In the early 20th century, a document came to light, an ancient document showing the seating plan of the church. The document stated that on the 15th day of April 1636, one John Lord, Bishop of Chester, did then order ye inhabitants of ye said parish to sit in the seats as hereby described. Now on that list were many names, but far too many to mention here today. However, just to give you a flavour of that list, here are a few of those names. John Kirks, Robert Welshman, William Hatton, William Bushell, Henry Birkenhead, William Ashton, Elizabeth Aldersley, Robert Fisher and William Johnson. The list goes on and on. Now one of the strangest things to ever happen here at St Oswald's happened in the year of 1538, for it was that year when Robert Barr was to marry Elizabeth Rogerson. Now you may think there's absolutely nothing wrong with a wedding, and why should there be? However, Robert was just three years old. To induce the child into getting married, he had to be lured on the promise of an apple by his uncle to the church. Once in the church, the uncle held tight to little Robert and held him in his arms until the ceremony was over. It was during early medieval times that Backford was an appendant lordship of the masses of Dunham Massey. By the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, Backford was once again acquired, but this time by Henry Birkenhead of Huxley. The old hall that stood was the residence of the family from 1605 onwards, being rebuilt once again during the 18th century. There's nothing more wonderful than country churches and churchyards, and I for one have fell in love with them. Each churchyard is different, and every churchyard tells a different story. However, they all have one thing in common, and that's our local history.
Here in the churchyard at St Oswald's stand many tombstones, many telling their own story of lives of loved ones lost and recording the details of the families and their own history. Outside the east window of the church stands the tomb of Richard Coventry of Mollington. This one stood within the chancel. Although the Latin epitaph has long disappeared under the action of the weather, the coat of arms is still faintly visible. In fact, the inscription is only recoverable from a copy made in the 17th century. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed our visit here today to St Oswald's Church in Batford. Why not join us again soon when I take yet another ramble through history? If you'd like to read more about the history of St Oswald's Church in the parish of Backford, then why not try and find a copy of the history book written by historian John Peter Hess.